us as a nation right now from a public policy perspective, which is that we're at this really strange time in our country's history, where we have record high unemployment in a generation, millions of people looking for work, and yet at the very same time, we have lots of employers who say they have over three million job openings, and yet they can't find qualified people to fill these openings. Just think about that for a second. Millions of people looking for jobs, and millions of jobs with employers that say they can't find people to fill them. And then finally, a lot of technologies commoditize. Towards the end of their life, they uh, become nearly free. Each one of those is an opportunity to do something about it. There's an opportunity for the technology to change. And, each, and even if you missed you know, the, first, the first boom of Wi-Fi, you know, Wi-Fi wi 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 did the critical price, it did the critical mass, but it hasn't done displacement yet, and it hasn't done free yet. There's still more opportunity in that. I'd like to demonstrate uh, what I mean by this by going through this, telling the story of the DVD, which is a technology which has done all of these. The DVD, as you know, was introduced in the mid-1990s, and it was quite expensive. But you can see that by 1998, it had fallen below $400, and $400 was a psychological threshold. work of those people easily in an institutional frame. The institutional model always pushes leftwards, treating these people as employees. The institutional response is, I can get 75% of the value for 10% of the hires, great. That's what I'll do. The cooperative infrastructure model says, why do you want to give up a quarter of the value? If your system is designed so that you have to give up a quarter of the value, re-engineer the system. Don't take on the cost that prevents you from getting to the contributions of these people. Build the system so that anybody can contribute at any amount. So the, the coordination response asks not how are these people as employees, but rather what is their contribution like? Right? We have over here Psycho Milt. A Crime, bloody murders. On the other hand, it's also a great time to be stupid. So if you uh, want to, well, so this is putting it very badly. Um, it's very easy to go down wrong paths and get reconfirmed in those paths. Mm -hmm. It's very easy not only to be wrong, but to be increasingly convinced that you're right when in fact you are really, really wrong. Uh, and, and that's a problem. Uh, so that's the first thing. Second thing is the hopeful thing is, I think, that. Progress in culture often um, is unevenly distributed, and so uh, particularly in, in olden times when, when a moneyed white male elite was the only ones who had the opportunity to, to know and to research and to advance. Mm -hmm. uh, even so, and obviously it's much better now, not perfect, but much, much better. Um, even in those circumstances, uh, the people who know how to know and to do research um, are able to pull, pull their culture forward um, behind them. So it may be stuff <laughs> at school for the most part. It seems to me it's not a coincidence totally that the instance of ADHD has risen in parallel with the growth of standardized testing. Now these kids are being given Ritalin and Adderall and all manner of things, often quite dangerous drugs, to get them focused and calm them down. But according to this, attention deficit disorder increases as you travel east across the country. People start losing interest in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> they can hardly think straight in Arkansas. And by the time they get to Washington, they've lost it completely. And there are separate reasons for that, I believe. <laughs> it's a fictitious epidemic. If you think of it, the arts and I don't say this exclusively to the arts. I think it's also true of science and of maths. But let me, I say about the arts particularly because they are the victims of this mentality currently, particularly. The arts especially address the idea of aesthetic experience. An aesthetic experience is one in which your senses are operating at their peak. When you're present in the current moment, when you're resonating with the excitement of this thing that you're experiencing, when you are fully alive. An anesthetic is when you shut your senses off and deaden yourself to what's happening. And a lot of these drugs are that.